Hello, hello, hello. It's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biology playlist. In the last video, we had a discussion on the anatomy of the respiratory system. Today, we'll talk about the physiology part, the mechanics of breathing. Get the air in and get it out. Oxygen in, carbon dioxide out. Which one is more important? Getting the carbon dioxide out is more important than getting the oxygen in. To know why, please refer to the last video. Getting the air in is known as inhalation or inspiration. Getting the air out is known as exhalation or expiration. Fun fact from physics. Positive pressure pushes stuff, while negative pressure pulls. Example, if a freaking meteorologist told you that a big gust of wind is blowing from California to Arizona, what does that mean? Well, it means that the air pressure in California is higher than air pressure in Arizona. That's why air is moving from high pressure to low pressure. This is true for liquids and gases because these are the fluids according to physics. This pressure difference is known as pressure differentials. No, duh. If the air is blowing from California to Arizona, it's as if California has a positive pressure, relatively speaking, whereas Arizona has a negative pressure relative to California. Why? Because positive pressure pushes, but a negative pressure pulls. Let's give a hypothetical example. Suppose that the pressure in California was about 20 torr, but the pressure in Arizona was just 5 torr. Okay, now what's the driving pressure or the pressure differentials? 20 minus 5 equals 15. Let me take you back to the good old days, which were not so good. When you were at school, science class, and there was this device that is a vacuum, basically. There is a lovely pump or small device here that sucks the air out of this container. So let's talk about before sucking versus after sucking. Before removing air out of the system, the pressure here inside this vessel was atmospheric. If it's atmospheric, we call it zero. Zero here does not mean absolute zero. It just means that we have the same pressure here as in the atmosphere. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Now, when you suck the air out of the device, what's going to happen to the air pressure here? Well, if air is moving, the pressure is going to decrease. And this will be a negative pressure, which means the pressure inside is lower than the atmospheric pressure outside. Here comes the question. When the pressure becomes negative, what's going to happen to the balloon that's hanged freely here? The balloon is going to expand. Why? Because negative pressure pulls. This is exactly how your lungs work during inspiration. Now, this is not a vessel. This is your chest wall or thoracic cavity. Nice. Who's the balloon? The balloon is your lung. Who's the device that's creating the negative pressure? Well, there are two devices. Number one, the diaphragm. Number two, the external intercostal muscles. Why do you call them intercostal? The word inter means between. Costal means ribs, the muscles between the ribs. During inspiration, the diaphragm is going to descend and go down. The external intercostal muscles are going to expand the chest wall. This will increase the volume of the chest wall, but decrease the pressure. When you lower the pressure, you create a negative pressure, which means a pressure that's lower than the atmosphere. Negative pressure pulls. So the air is going to leave the atmosphere and will enter into your lungs. This is what we call inspiration. This video will discuss the basics. If you want to dig deeper, check out my pulmonology playlist here on YouTube, a video titled Normal Quiet Breathing. When air comes in, this is called inspiration or inhalation. When air goes out, it's called expiration or exhalation. From here, you can deduce that the pressure in the atmosphere is higher than the pressure in your chest wall, relatively speaking, of course. The pressure in the atmosphere is like atmosphere, we call it zero, and therefore, the chest cavity has to have a negative pressure. That's why air moves from the atmosphere to your lungs during inspiration. Conversely, during expiration, the pressure in your thoracic cavity is higher than the outside world. That's why air moves from here to here. 
since the atmosphere is always atmosphere or zero, your thoracic cavity pressure has to be positive in order for air to leave your lungs and go to the outside during expiration. Here's the question. Can your body control the pressure in the outside world? The answer is no. Therefore, you have to take control of that which you can control, your own body. You can only tweak your chest wall. And therefore, during inhalation, I have to create a negative pressure in my chest wall. But during expiration, I have to create a positive pressure in my chest wall. But how do I do that? Let me say it one more time for the kids in the back. During inspiration, you shall create a negative pressure. However, during expiration, thou shall produce a positive pressure. Remember Boyle's law. Mr. Boyle said that when the temperature is constant, the relationship between gas pressure and gas volume is inverse. If the volume goes up, pressure goes down. Volume goes down, pressure goes up. During inspiration, your chest wall gets a negative pressure and the volume expands and it fills up with air. During expiration, the pressure of the chest wall increases, but the air is leaving, so the volume decreases. During inspiration, diaphragm goes down, external intercostals contract to expand the chest wall cavity, and therefore, what's going to happen to the volume? Increase, pressure, decrease. But during expiration, the exact opposite happens. Diaphragm moves upwards, and the chest cavity decreases in volume, pressure increases, air leaves. Now, this slide is super duper sophisticated. Please refer to my video titled Normal Quiet Breathing in my Pulmonology Playlist. But as a very quick review, inspiration versus expiration. What happens to the lung volume during inspiration? Well, I'm breathing in. <gasps> Therefore, it has to increase. Okay, during expiration, I'm breathing out. <sighs> Therefore, the lung volume has to decrease. Easy peasy. Now, who pulled the air in the decrease in the pressure? Oh, I get it. So pressure goes down, volume goes up. This is Boyle's law. Here during expiration, you have the exact opposite. Pressure increasing, volume is decreasing. Please note that the intrapleural pressure, which is the pressure inside the pleural cavity, is always negative. Whether you're talking about inspiration or expiration, doesn't matter. It's always negative. But why is that medicosis? The negative intrapleural pressure is due to the dynamic, harmonious, antagonism between the chest wall, which wants to expand, and the lungs, which want to recoil. Imagine that this is your right lung. Lung is here, chest wall is here. The chest wall, of course, is bones, muscles, joints, etc. We're talking about the rib cage. The lung is on one side, the chest wall is on the other side. What's in between? The pleural cavity. The chest wall wants to expand. The lungs want to recoil, creating a negative pressure between them, which prevents them from being separated. If you cannot grasp this, imagine two slides, two glass slides like the ones that you use under the microscope. Get two of them. Add a teeny tiny drop of water between them. Okay. Then push them toward each other until they hug each other. Okay. Then I will try to pull this one this way and pull the other one the other way. It's impossible to separate them. How come? Because when you're pulling this one up and pulling the other one down, you're creating a negative pressure in between, which prevents them from being separated from each other. This is exactly the story of the pleura. This single drop of fluid is the pleural cavity. This is the chest wall. This is the lung. The lung wants to recoil on its own. The chest wall just wants to expand creating a negative pressure in between, which prevents them from leaving each other. That's why you do not have to worry about your chest wall popping out of your body. Nor do you have to worry about lung collapse if you are normal. The lung is like a balloon. If you leave it alone, it wants to recoil. Like the balloon, leave the balloon alone in the air. Oh, it, it wants to recoil. Chest wall wants to expand, creating a negative pressure in between, and that's called the intra plural pressure. Breathing is under autonomic control. The respiratory center is in the middle oblongata, which is part of the brain. It's part of the brainstem. However, 
The diaphragm is under somatic control. The diaphragm is a somatic muscle. And that's why in the vast, vast majority of cases, most of the time, you are not aware that you're breathing. It happens automatically because under autonomic control. Can I override it? Yes, you can override it for a short period of time like this. <gasps> I just overrode my medulla oblongata. But if I breathe like crazy, consciously, for a long period of time, the medulla will get mad at me because this can kill me from respiratory acidosis or respiratory alkalosis as we have discussed in the previous video. Oh, by the way, if you want to download these notes in PDF forms, go to medicosisperfectionalist.com. Which one is more important, getting the oxygen in or taking the carbon dioxide out? Of course, taking the carbon dioxide out is more important because of the pH. Carbon dioxide is a freaking acid because when you add carbon dioxide to water, you get carbonic acid. So let's breathe in. <gasps> Oxygen has entered into your lungs. Of course, like not just oxygen, like oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, water vapor, etc. But only oxygen is needed here. We'll take that oxygen and give it to the blood because the function of red blood cells is to carry oxygen. And then take that oxygen, the red blood cell is going to give it to cell. The cell is going to take that oxygen and then give you carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is going to return to be exhaled. How does oxygen go from here to here? Three parts. Number one, ventilation, which is to get oxygen into the alveoli. Next is diffusion, which is from here to here through this membrane. Number three is to jump on the red blood cell. So sending oxygen to the alveoli is called ventilation. Sending blood near the alveoli is called perfusion. Sending the oxygen from the blue to the red is called diffusion or gas exchange. Oxygen is going to come in, carbon dioxide is going to leave the chat. What are causes of hypoxia? A disease that affects ventilation, a disease that affects perfusion, or a disease that affects um, diffusion. Here's the atmospheric air, I breathe it in. Okay, I care about the oxygen. Oxygen is in my lungs, and then oxygen is going to leave my lungs and go to the arterial blood. And then oxygen is going to jump on the hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is going to give oxygen to tissue. Tissue or cells will take oxygen and give you carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is going to jump onto the same hemoglobin. And now we are in the venous blood. We're talking here about superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. Go back to the heart. Heart will take heat to the lungs. Breathe that carbon dioxide out. <sighs> now let's call them names in a good way. Oxygen in the atmosphere is called FiO2. When oxygen enters your alveoli, it's called PaO2. P is for pressure, A is for alveoli. When it's in the arterial blood, it is P small a, a for arterial. When it's on the hemoglobin, it's called SA, S because it's saturation. And then this is called oxyhemoglobin because it has oxygen. But this is called carbaminohemoglobin because it has carbon dioxide. Be careful. This is carbaminohemoglobin, not carboxyhemoglobin. Carboxyhemoglobin is carbon monoxide. This is poison. This can kill you. We're talking about the normal carbon dioxide, which is part of the atmosphere. This is carbaminohemoglobin, which is normal. Carboxyhemoglobin is not normal. Not in significant quantities, I mean. Do veins have oxygen? They have a teeny tiny amount of oxygen called PVO2. V is for venous. If my videos helped you in the last year, please consider buying me a coffee. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. Thank you so much in advance. Filling your alveoli with air is called ventilation. Getting blood near the alveoli is called perfusion. Getting oxygen in, carbon dioxide out is called diffusion through this membrane. This lovely membrane is made of six layers. First, your alveoli are wet. Then the endothelium, which is just uh, epithelial tissue that lines the alveoli. Then we have basement membrane here, epithelial basement membrane. And we have fluid in the interstitial space. Then we have the capillary endothelium, which is sitting on the basement membrane. So the capillary basement membrane first, and then the endothelium next. When oxygen leaves the alveoli and goes to the blood, this is called diffusion, which is simple diffusion translation. No ATP needed, 
no carrier needed. This does not need energy. You should be thankful for this. You know how many times you breathe every day? A lot. Imagine that you needed ATP for every single time that every single drop of oxygen diffuses by. Well, you would have needed it to eat like 15 meals a day or something. To learn more, please check my pulmonology playlist. Inspiration versus expiration. Inspiration is active, expiration is passive. Inspiration is shorter, expiration is longer. Look at this. <gasps> expiration is longer. When you inhale, you increase the three dimensions of your chest cavity. When you expire, you decrease them. During inspiration, volume increases, pressure decreases. During expiration, it's the exact opposite. Let's talk about normal quiet breathing. When you are just reading a book, the diaphragm should go down, external intercostals will contract. But during expiration, you don't need energy. It's passive. The diaphragm will go back to its normal position and the lungs will shrink because they love to recoil. But what if I'm doing forced inspiration like this? <gasps> well, you need diaphragm, external intercostals plus extra muscles. What if I'm doing forced expiration like this? <gasps> now expiration will not be passive and will start getting active. You will need internal intercostals and the abdominal muscles get your six packs going. Hey, Medicosis, why is expiration longer than inspiration? Because expiration is passive, therefore slow, because I'm not exerting energy here. If you want to learn about the treatment of asthma and the treatment of peptic ulcer disease, check out my Utakoids Pharmacology course on my website, medicosisperfectsnetis.com. If you study in January, you are my friend because you are a unicorn. So here is 60% discount for you. Just use this discount code new year learning at checkout thank you for watching please subscribe hit the bell and click on the join button you can support me here or here go to my website download my courses be safe stay happy study hard this is medicosis perfectionatus where medicine makes perfect sense